This is the air I believe. The topic now is the topic we have now is leadership. Is leadership. We all know that everything rises and falls on leadership, right? How many of you are aware of that? If you are a leader, can I see your hand up? You know you are a leader. This is leadership training ground conference. So if you are a leader, let me see your hand up. Your hand being up means that you acknowledge, you accept that you're a leader, right? Tell yourself, everything will rise and fall on my leadership. I will take responsibility for the leadership challenges, for the challenge of leading the people of God to safety. Everything rises and falls on leadership. That's the truth. The quality of followership we have, the quality of instructions we have, the quality of what delivery we get on any platform depends on the leadership. So if we understand that, it means there's a lot more demand on the leader than the followers. The leader is that person that has the honors to activate everything in line with what you're expected to achieve. Now we are talking in terms of CWL leadership and leadership in the body of Christ. So we are saying in effect that each one of us that God's work is dependent on our ability to deliver, to take the to take the people along the path that had been mapped out for us. And we know that the responsibility we have as CWL leaders is not just to this one that I'm here, somebody comes, will be fighting over my bag. That's not leadership. Or you're giving me special food. That's not leadership. Leadership is in everything you do to create focus, to generate responsibility and commitment. Everything we do as leaders to be able to achieve whatever we have been, that has been set for us as a target. Thankfully, um, we have heard all the responsibilities that are required of us as leaders. We just want to cap it up by going to the scripture. We're going to read First Peter chapter 5, verse 1, up to 7. We'll skip verse 5 and continue in 6 and 7. Now it says, To the elders among you, I appeal as fellow elder, a witness of Christ's suffering. I'm reading from NIV. And one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as, God's, as God wants you to be, not greedy of money, but eager to serve. I want you to pick out, because I'm coming back to ask us questions. You will tell me in line one, what did you pick out as the key word? Because we're all learning together. I'm a leader, you're a leader. Holy Spirit is our teacher. Okay? So you're going to look at what word strikes you. As someone who has seen that everything rises and falls on leadership and you believe it. And you're going to rise and fall with the women. It says, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being example... Examples to the flock. Verse 5 says, And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, 
that he may lift you up in due season. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of grace, God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the glory forever and ever. With the help of also, that's where we will stop in verse 11. Now I'm going back and I will ask questions. I can throw my questions randomly. He says here in verse 1, To the elders among you I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's suffering, and one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. What strikes you most? Sister Tonia, what strikes you most? Oh, let me start from this way. Sister Felicia, in that verse 1, what strikes you most? Mm, that verse one, that verse one. Suffering. So in leadership, because this thing is addressed to leaders, there's going to be suffering. That suffering may be the sacrifice, the bending over that you do, just so that the flock will be safe, the flock will be fully nourished, the flock will benefit fully. So there is, don't expect that the leadership you're doing is going to be better than Rosie's affair. There's going to be suffering. Sometimes your suffering is self-denial in food, in drinking, in sitting down, in resting, in sleeping, in sitting up to ask Holy Ghost, where do you want us to be directed toward? So when others are sleeping, you're denying yourself of comfort or, or some pleasure there will be suffering. The suffering can come in form of hidden disobedience and rebellion, insult. You know, uh, Sister Felicia told us in the, in the morning that when there are no offenses, it means there's really no relationship. So when you are leading people, you're bound to offend them. They are bound to offend you. But as children of God and especially leaders, you don't rub in any offense. When they come, deal with it. I like to deal with the issue and move on. Don't dwell on the issues that are not going to edify you. Issues of the past. As a leader, expect to make sacrifice. Expect to suffer some self-denial. Expect to suffer some emotional uh, discomfort or insult. Have you been experiencing any such in your the cause of leadership. Has anybody been experiencing anything like that? Anybody? Can you give us an example? Can somebody give us an example of an item or example of suffering you have been through because you're a leader, just because you're a leader in CRM, in CWM? Is anybody willing to share? Somebody said yes, and you're not willing to share. Who's willing to share an experience of suffering, humiliation, just because of the leadership your a position you're in? Is anybody willing to share? Sister Amaka, can you share with us? Eh? There are too many. You don't want to share. That's not good. It means you probably are hurting. So share with us, because if you do not share, we may not know that such a thing is a challenge in leadership. Praise the Lord. Actually, the, there are several challenges. I, sometimes, I just say, is it that all these people that I'm working with, 
Is it that they don't actually want to do something? Because sometimes you will see yourself doing everything. Praise the Lord. So even in the you know, leadership, that those of us that say that we are that they like maybe state coordinating committee or church, uh, local church uh, committee, we will see yourself. Sometimes I see that. No matter the assignment, this person we have heard about the different, uh, uh, yeah, the, the different offices we occupy. At least we have seven persons, and the five key one that mommy talked about. But was occupying, you, know, the, you will think this person do what you are supposed to do. We will be looking at you. Praise the Lord. It's actually a challenge, and that uh, and, uh, actually normally I say that you cannot punish the obedience when your own is not complete. If as leaders, we cannot do what we are supposed to do, what we are expected to do, to occupy. How do we now move to the flock? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Has anybody experienced that lack of willingness by people to promptly do what they are supposed to do as assigned? Anybody experienced that before? Plenty, eh? Do you know what it does? It makes the leadership very difficult and laborious and, in fact, it, it hinders the leadership. It makes it painful for that person that is leading. Leadership is sweetest and easiest and best and most effective when everybody is following. When nobody is following you, you're not leading. You're not leading. So what do we do about such a matter? I will tell you straight away what you should do. Do not follow a leader because you like the person's frame, manner of a, a speech, or uh, the way of approaching you, or because of what you gain. Follow like a sheep. Because that's the standard. When you follow like a sheep without question, you can be sure that God will reward you. But when you follow like a goat, always being like that, always squaring everything, always rebelling, you hinder the progress of the work. So if you're here and you're such a person that will be, like this one year, the first year I came here, I asked Sister Amaka, I said, why are you running around doing everything? Why don't you delegate? She said, ah, I've delegated though. The people I delegated are not doing what they are supposed to do. But I think there's a change. There's some improvement. What it means is that we must help one another to make the leadership easy for us. And as you do it, others will also do the same for you. There is need for synergy. There is need for cooperation. There is need for intentional obedience even when it's difficult. Once there is an agreed schedule, once there is a task that everybody is aware that is coming, don't say there is no this, there is no water in my house, my husband is coming home. There's this and that. Yes, there are times that such excuses can, you know, be permissible. But don't make it a culture that everything that you're asked to do, you query it. And then when you are assigned a duty, you leave it. You're asked, for example, to go to the market. You start complaining there's no, uh, that place is a distance. It's too distant for me. Can't you just assign the younger people? No, let's learn to be the sheep that God has asked us to be so that others can also be sheep as we are leading. What goes up comes down. Is that not true? What comes around, go, what go, goes around comes around. What you make happen for the other leader also will happen to you. So we've seen that point in number one, that there are sufferings. Such sufferings can be insult. Expect them. But train yourself to be able to absorb insult as if nothing happened. Not in the spirit of audacity, but in the spirit of you forgive easily. You move on easily. You don't go to sleep with somebody's offense hanging over you and invariably divorcing yourself from the presence of God. Just look at yourself in the whole uh, picture. That if I'm offended or somebody offends me or I offend the person, I'm divorced from the presence of God. So please, please, I cannot be offended. It doesn't mean you should be taking every insult or rudeness or mannerlessness. Even in the midst of that, you will find a way as a leader 
to make sure that whatever comes out of your attitude or your mouth amounts to edification to your hearer. That's the only thing you are permitted to exude. Did God not say you must be perfect? Eh? You must be perfect. Now that's the perfection. That somebody offends you grievously. You go in and cry to God and say, please, I'm offended. You didn't even tell that person. Please, I'm offended. Lord, help, have mercy on me. I told you of an example of a brother leader who offended me so. I didn't confront him up till tomorrow. I rather went in and cried and cried and cried. Cried so much that day that I did that cry. Uh, mucus was just pouring from my face. I said, I can't take in the offense against my brother. He's my brother. He's the only brother. Lord, is your son. I look at my heart. This wicked heart is admitting, admitting offense. Ah, so I'm still a homie. Jesus, please help my unbelief. I prayed until I felt I have forgiven my brother. The next moment I saw him, I didn't ever discuss that offense. I just laid it off completely by God's grace. So instead of justifying my anger that is taking me away from God, putting me on the path of go first be reconciled, I rather told myself sorry. I made God to Holy Spirit to help me. And I moved on. That should be our attitude. So if offenses come in the course of duty, don't dwell on it so that you can be effective and your service and sacrifice will be acceptable. Now, verse 2 says, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve. There's so much in this verse. So much. I'm going to bring them up myself. The one is you should be shepherd. Do you know the characteristics of a shepherd? This leadership we have accepted was not forced on us. And even if it were forced on us, we accepted after we were forced. <laughs> is that not true? If you didn't accept, you wouldn't be here. So now that you have accepted, you're a shepherd. A shepherd is one who looks out for the safety, for the security, for the nourishment, for the growth, for the well-being of the sheep. Someone who makes sure that a devourer will not come and devour the sheep. That's a shepherd. A shepherd goes all whole to find pasture. As the sheep are moving around, is the shepherd that is in front leading them. Either in front or from behind. But if he's behind, he's speaking language and gestures that the sheep already know and understand. There's a relationship. If there's no relationship with the sheep and the shepherd, the sheep will go astray. But the sheep understands the body language, the gesture, the, the noise, or whatever that the shepherd makes because there's a relationship. If you're a shepherd and you're not in relationship with the people you're leading, everybody will be dancing to different tunes. You're not involved. We already said that. You're not involved in their affairs. You're not looking into their eyes. People say love is a funanya. That means looking straight into the eyes of the person you care about. And by so doing, you notice when the eyes are red, when the eyes are wet due to pressure, due to distress, due to pain, due to emotional torture or whatever. You notice when that eye is signaling, I'm not happy. Then you call that person aside and say, what's the problem? That's what a shepherd should do. You're taking care. You're providing. You're leading. The shepherd leads the flock to where there is green pasture. The shepherd does not offend the sheep. When one sheep is missing, the shepherd stays on the hunt until that sheep is recovered. The Bible tells us when David was the shepherd of his sheep, lion came, deer came. What did he do? He risked his life to deliver the sheep. He fought the bear and he tore it into pieces so that it would not take one sheep. That's the shepherd. What kind of shepherd are you? Are you that, sharp, that shepherd that will say, let me miss my sleep because this sheep is in trouble. Let me go the extra mile. Let me support this sheep. 
Because if you're a shepherd and you're not caring sufficiently to the very needs of the individual sheep, those individual sheep at their various points of needs will become non-conformist, non-compliant. They'll become good inside the midst of the flock of sheep. So a shepherd cares, counsels, leads, guides, provides, protects, shields. Is that what you're doing with the sisters you're leading? Or you're just there for them to carry your bag and give you special kind of food? And call you mommy, and that's all. If you're a mother, you know what a mother does now. A mother cares, not so. A mother prays. A mother provides. A mother feeds. A mother protects. So whether you're answering mother or shepherd, you're just like the same person, caring for the people you're leading. It says, it says that these people are God's flock. So it's not even, you have to be careful. We have to be careful because the people we're leading are not our own. There's someone that owns them that we should be accountable to. So we must be mindful and careful how we lead them so that the owner of the sheep will not say, why did you kill my sheep? Why did you give the wrong uh, grazing? Why did you take them to a wrong place of grazing? Why did you, so that we will not receive query from the chief shepherd. Says you should be serving as overseer. Overseer is somebody who sees over. I'm overseeing all of you now because I can see everybody's head. I can see when you're bending. I can, so your eyes are everywhere. The overseer sees every, just like our geo. I was just gossiping him today. Eh? Anywhere a youth is wedding or making an achievement or having a distress or whatever, my experience with my geo is that he plugs in. If you're enjoying, he's enjoying with you. If you're crying, he's crying with you. He's looking out for the safety of the youth because he's so passionate about them. That's a shepherd. That's a, a, an overseer. We must also... Practice. It may not happen to you automatically, but you need to be desirous to do what you're supposed to do. Why? Because the chief shepherd is taking record as to why, how you're taking, tending to the sheep. Are you offending them off? Some of, the, of you, when you see the youth displaying their youthful, let me use the beriberism now. <laughs> they are displaying it because they are youths. And there's a drive, a vibe that they just are doing. They love God, but this is their level. Of, my children will look at our pictures, old be, eh? Hey, Daddy, so you want this type of hair? Look at your uh, the, 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 the bongo trousers and uh, the akbola. Hi, akbola. And you will tell us we are doing guy. When you're in it, it's nothing to you. But when you get out of it, look out at, look back and look at vanity. And you look out for youthful exuberance. So sometimes, for me, I may not pursue you and slap you and give you negative words. I'll find a way to come around it. Not in the way I spoke to my daughter. But I will, there will be a way to let you know that ah, ah, moderation is still the standard. You know, you have a way of coming around to, first of all, that youth must like you as a leader. If the youth does not like you and is resentful of you because of your manner of approach or because you're so archaic in everything that you do, even in your interpretation of the Bible, you're archaic. When you're talking, the person doesn't want to insult you. She'll just keep quiet. When you finish making that noise, the, the child walks away. And does nothing with all your rebuke and criticism. But if you're a good mother, a good shepherd, you will know how to, first of all, endear yourself to that person. And then know how to come around with the good value you want to give. Our jobs as shepherds is not to condemn God's children or God's sheep. Because as we read, we find out that the Bible says he's the chief shepherd that will come with reward. You're a shepherd, but he's the ogapatakota of the shepherd. And you're working for him and with him. Praise the Lord. So the shepherd is observing to see how you're handling the sheep. He says, because you must. He said, you're not under 
you, you, you're serving as overseer, not because you must, because if you don't want, you resign now. Is that not true? But God needs you. He doesn't want you to resign. He rather wants you to be compliant. But because you are willing, tell yourself, I am willing and I'm obedient. I'm not a critic. I'm not a judge. I am also a sheep. You're willing as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, not eager, but eager to serve. You're not greedy for money and you're not greedy for anything else. As a chief shepherd, I was observing Sister Amaka. The sharing and eating was going on. She was just busy sweating and running around, engaging herself, making sure that everybody, even Sister Felicia came to force me. I said, I don't want to eat because I want to eat in Sister Wanchuku's house. There's loy loy, and I don't want to eat that loy loy and also eat some, load myself. So Felicia came to pressure me. I said, oh, you're eating, talking about health. Take small, take something. She hadn't eaten us at that time. I just smiled. I said, you that are preaching, take something. What is the thing you are taking? So the mother, the, the shepherd, will not eat until the children have eaten. Is it not true? So even in that area of where we are leaders, you want to be served, make sure that you're the one going around to serve. And the service may not be that you're the one carrying plates. You're just ensuring that everybody is satisfied. When you see that all is well, you come and sit down and have your peace. It's not, you're not a leader or a shepherd because you want to eat the biggest meat and drink the biggest ragolis water and pack takeaway. If you're doing such things around me, I don't even, I don't want to call out that. No, 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 no. That's why we're here. Because I have trained myself by God's grace. Or Holy Spirit has trained me to know that I'm not a hireling. Do you understand? A hireling is that person that works so that he can get his pay. Are you a hireling? If you're a hireling, you're only hireling to God, not to man. And in the sense of I am serving my father. And he is going to pay you in the manner that he esteems appropriate for you. So we are not people who will, who will just do work and stand and start waiting for payback. Some of us will say, I pay my tithes. I do this. Therefore, God, I command that. So you are now a hireling. You have done this, so pay me back. In God's service, you just serve. You just serve like a slave, even though you know you're a friend. You're an, a co-heir with Jesus. You have been exalted and elevated from the normal status where you would have been to the platform where you are at par with the, 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 the first fruit that is Jesus. You can now sit and enjoy heaven with him when the time is due. Even though you know that, you know that you are a servant. You have no say of your own. Praise the Lord. So we are not to be greedy of food, greedy of water, greedy of comfort. If you have a space, for example, in a conference to lie down and one of your shepherd, sheep has no place, you give up that place and sit down on the chair till morning. You will not die. When you go home, you lie on your bed comfortably. Nobody will share it with you. Praise the Lord. So the shepherd is not the one that receives service all the time. He's the one that will... Make sure, say, any one of you that will be leader among you must be the chief servant. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, Learn to be the servant of all. <laughs> Those of us who, who, who brought up our children with kids' praise. You remember that? <laughs> uh, that's why I learned all those songs when I was bringing up my children and others in the Bible club. We used to sing all these songs just to drive home the point we're making. So if you want to be the chief uh, shepherd and great in the achievement of your service, make sure you're the one serving. You're the one ensuring that everybody is happy and comfortable before you seek your comfort. Praise the Lord. It says in verse 3, 
You're not lording it over those entrusted in, unto you, but being examples to the flock. You're not lording it over. You're not, you're not just swaying your around, feeling like the big man and doing anything. No. You are actively involved in the shepherding work. Leading them, guiding them, showing them we're doing things by example. When they look at you, they say, oh, look at Obi, for example. That presidential candidate of LP. You see the way he is showing himself a leader. You see the kind of, the characteristics that we should have even as leaders of God's people. You don't insist on any right of yours because of your status. Rather, do things, look out for the good of everybody and be found to be doing it. As you're doing it, you are influencing so many people. They want to be like you. They want to serve like you. They want to do things the way you're doing. Not lording it over, saying, do you know, you have no, these girls have no respect. Sometimes you notice that they don't have respect, but you just show them the respect by example. You show them the respect. If somebody doesn't respect you, respect that person along the line. You should tell that person. Point out. See, we should learn to address issues rather than generalize issues. Do you understand? If I make mistake 20 times, point out the specific mistakes that I made and move on. If I make that mistake again, that's probably what Jesus meant by when he said, if your friend or brother offends you 70 times 7, you should forgive all through. Do you think that person is offending on the same issue? Eh? This offender is a habitual offender. Today he tells you, tomorrow he tells you, waka. Tomorrow he tells you, Aye. another day he says you're stupid. As the issue arises, deal with it and move on. When it comes again, deal with it and move on. Just keep, train yourself to learn to deal with it and move on without pocketing any offense. That's the standard. That's what I practice. As I'm sitting here, standing here, I don't have anybody who has offended me. I don't know. If I have offended you, please do me a favor. Tell me. You know what I'll do? Before you explain what I'll do, I will either kneel down or hug you and beg you. Because I'm being selfish. I don't want to be told, depart, go first, be reconciled. I'm a bit selfish, aren't I? Hmm? I'm a bit selfish. In the sense that because of my relationship with God, I don't want to do certain things. Uh, so that if you say your problem is I offended, do please, sorry, I beg. Anyhow you want it. I will not do it to this. I must do it. To, there is one young girl I told you. Did I tell you yesterday? I finished begging her in the presence of all those people she was insulting me. As I left, I felt that I haven't done a thorough work. Holy Spirit said, invite her to your office. So I did. I told the administrator and the accountant, I said, as soon as she comes in, please lock the door. Two of us alone. Nobody should touch that door until I'm done with her. So as soon as she showed up, they just came nicely, closed the door, locked it. I fell on my knees. I said, ah, I didn't know I offended you. I was just doing my duty. And you happened to go. I said, why? You have been hugging me. He said, hey. I said, I've been hugging. He said, hey, I'm the one that hugged you. I said, but when I hug you, you hug back. Why did you not tell me? I'm very sorry. I was on my knees begging. She looked at me for a while. And then felt big enough. She said, stand up. She started crying. She started crying. She said, no, no, no. Don't kneel for me. Don't kneel. She started crying. Uh, 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 in the course of crying, she came and sat on my laps and told me, you are the best Christian in the world. You are a mother. I love you. Would I have got all those ones if I had said, this small rat. That's your business. Meanwhile, I've taken myself off the track of going to meet with my savior, darling Jesus. I begged her on my knees until she started crying. Then she sat on my lap and started pecking me and saying, I'm the best Christian. She has never seen a Christian like me. I'm a mother. In fact, you're my mother. You probably see this stuff. In fact, you're my mother. You're my mother. We so reconciled, but in my head, I knew I was being selfish. I don't want God to be angry with me, I beg. Say so you're a hypocrite. She said so much, but you know my response to her as I stood. All I told her was square peg on a round hole. Your description does not match me. You're not describing me. I didn't go jawing jaw with her. I said, You're not describing me. You're not describing me. 
It's a square peg on a round hole. It doesn't match. When she continued and continued, I said, okay, I wanted to walk away. The Holy Spirit quickly halted me and brought that scripture I have been quoting all day long. Matthew 5, 23. The moment he brought that scripture, I did not argue. I did not take half a step. I stood there and began to apologize profusely to her. I said, I'm sorry. You were offended. It's just my line of duty. As an executive in my own small, no, no, I don't call myself small, in my very, listen, I have the uh, 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 honors to hire and fire based on the judgment, you know. So I fired her and she felt I'm a wicked woman, blah, blah, and said so much. To God be the glory. In my presence, she said, you're a good woman, you're no body life, never seen a Christian, you're my mother, you're a mother. I said in my head, hi, this old lady. Wicked woman, you called me in public. And inside my office, I'm the best Christian. You've never seen a woman like me. I'm a mother. It didn't bother me. Because if I consider that flesh will pop up, pride will come. I will spoil the shoe. I was happy. I was happy. I hugged her back. I made her promises. We reconciled quantumly. And now she's my daughter, according to our friend. And I accept it. But most of all, I am free. I am free. I'm telling you. So, it, 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 you should never let yourself be in the way of the service you want to give. And you know, this person is among us. She's a CWL woman. But she came to CWL after she encountered me and we parted ways. So, in that accusation, I said, if indeed you saw me like this, I think it would have been difficult for you to jo join my church. She says, it's not my leadership. It's not that. I shut up again. <laughs> because I felt that I was so you. I said, but I used to give you food and stuff. She said, how many times did you give? I said, I gave at all. I kept quiet. She was just really insult. Eventually, we reconciled because I care about my relationship with Jesus. I also care about her own relationship. Because when she releases me, she is also free. But at least what I did with her, taught her a lesson. And she began to say, you're a mother, you're my mother. Oh, I love you, I'm sorry. I did, I did those things out of anger. <laughs> so please, don't do anger like that. Anger dwells in the bosom of fools. Anytime you're angry and anger is making you to leave, say, I'm angry, but I'm a fool. I'm angry, I'm a fool. I'm a fool. I'm a fool. I am angry. Don't keep justifying that anger. Just be repeating to yourself, I'm a fool. I'm a fool. Because the Bible says it and it doesn't lie. That anger dwells in the bosom of fools. If you're offended, tell your neighbor, deal with it. If you're offended in the line of duty, deal with it. Don't bottle it. Don't dwell on it. Don't, don't, don't even wait. Don't check whether the sun has gone halfway. Just deal with it. Deal with it. And when you deal with it, don't bring it up again tomorrow. Just deal with it. When yourself wants to rehearse the one of previous, tell that yourself. You are proud. You are not broken. You are still a whole you. You are wicked. Remember that Jesus is coming. Deal with yourself too. Because if you are blunt with yourself, you will be able to rule yourself. Gio said, self-rulership is the best rulership. When you can have, lead yourself aright. Not waiting for my own father said, you should not be told you're supposed to know better because that's an indictment. That's my father's, uh, uh, that by the time somebody tells you, oh, you're supposed to know better. That means you're already judged and indicted. You didn't do what you're supposed to do. So lead yourself, be yourself, lead. govern yourself, deal with yourself. Stop waiting for that person to come and apologize. Don't wait now. What are you waiting for? Deal with it so that you can lead with open heart. Uh, there are some people you will even study as a leader and a shepherd. You will notice that this is their pattern of behavior. They are not dealing with it yet. But I am not going to be brought to their level. So anytime they offend you, excuse them and move on. Until you have an opportunity to say, do you know that this thing you are doing? It's not right. Until that opportunity comes, understand that this is their life and I'm not going to come to their level because they have not perfected. Is that taken? Am I making the point? So don't let somebody's weakness become your weakness. 
If that's your area of strength, then just pity that person. Pray for that person. Counsel that person. Do whatever you can to help that person. But some people are so insensitive to their relationship with God and stubborn in their iniquity that you will not be able to change them. So leave them and just know that this is her. This is her weak point. So cover her for her weak point. That's the way to live though. If you're trying to make everybody perfect, to come to your platform of holiness before you'll be happy to lead, you will not make it. They will offend you into hell. Be mindful of that. Now, so it's not loading over the, the being example to the flock. He says in verse 4, he says, when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Hi. Let your eyes and focus be that on that crown of glory. Praise the Lord. I don't need to dwell on that. Let that engross you. When you look, distraction comes. Look at it like, no, I look like this and just focus. Don't dwell on it. Focus. Dwell on that crown. Jesus for the crown that was set ahead of him endured, Right? Right? So you, we too must endure as we lead. God expects us to have good grades, not to fail with excuses. My lecturer did not, he was in the habit of coming early. He doesn't like me. He hated me. But you have failed. Or the class is too tight. There's always noise. There's heat. There's no AC. You have failed. In the midst of your ex, uh, uh, excusing yourself, others have passed. Heaven is real, I hope you know. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares about you. This thing that we take on, we extract and isolate, has to do with leadership. In the course of your leadership, in your line of duty, whatever becomes a concern, a, a challenge to you, take it to the Lord in prayer. These people, I don't know whether they don't like me or God, grant me wisdom to deal with them. Solomon said, these your people are stiff naked. God, give me wisdom and they, they know how to be able to lead them aright. You pray about it. Cast your burden upon the Lord. He cares. He will grant you the grace and wisdom to go. Maybe he will say, okay, go and tell this person to go with you to do. You know, there has to be a way around it. But there's never an excuse for you to abandon somebody, condemn the person, give up on that person. And then continue with bitter. Because when you do all of that, you know what happens? You become defiled. And as long as that person, and as far as that person is concerned, you're no longer free. You're no longer be, going to be able to add value. Leadership is not of a manual. It's not pepper soup. It is a very, it's like motherhood. You know motherhood is not easy. To produce a well-adjusted one individual is a, a big, 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 onerous task but you make up your mind that I will make it and you will make it you see that sh chief shepherd is coming with his reward did you get that in verse 4 it says when the sheep shepherd appears you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away wow everyone say wow, wow. I look forward to that crown you didn't say that Thank you, Lord, because your grace will make it happen. Now in verse 4, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may lift you up in due time. So while you're leading, be humble, be ready to take everything that comes and still be well-adjusted in your emotion and still be careful the way you treat others. Value every sheep. Value them. Be mindful of their well-being and welfare. Praise the Lord. Be self-controlled in verse 8 and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That enemy is looking for one of the shepherds, one of the sheep. He may be looking for you. So he, he can come through the sheep so that the shepherd can be hit or struck. Because the truth is, when an offense occurs or discouragement or failure occurs in the line of duty, you know what the Bible talks about, the crack on the wall? It creates a loop, a hole for Satan to strike successfully. But when everywhere is tidied up and strengthened and there's synergy and unity, the devil cannot find space. He will not be able to strike successfully. So we need bond of perfection, bond of unity. And when there's a challenge, cast your anxiety upon the Lord for he cares. He knows that these things are challenging. 
Have self-control and be at alert. Be careful. The enemy is around, roaring, looking for how to devour you or devour the people that you're leading. Don't allow him to devour you. Don't also allow him to devour any of your sheep. Resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that your pro brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, he himself will restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be every power and glory forever in Jesus' name. Is there any question? Is there any agitation? Is there any observation on this first Peter 5 um, scripture that we have talked about? Is there any contribution? You want to say something in addition to what has been said? Or expansion on the scriptures that we've read? I need contributions. Leaders, sisters, please now help us. Maybe we want to go. It's to four now. Any contributions? Ah, when a teacher has taught and nobody has questions, it shows that they didn't even understand what the teacher taught. <laughs> Did we all gain something? Okay. Praise the Lord. I just want to add, I was one of the things that struck me there is that I shouldn't lord it over the people that I'm leading. And that is my duty to be strong in the faith, in faith for the sheep. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Don't lord it over. That's why Jesus said we should be servant leaders. You know, we have, you remember when we did a study on servant leadership? We've done that. Even our mommy did, um, I think, a thesis on servant leadership. We are all servant leaders because in the course of directing people, you are serving them. Nothing says that they will not also reciprocate in the service, but you are the one leading in the service. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, sister. Any other addition or contribution? Okay, let us pray. We're going to pray, Lord. Make me an instrument of your peace. Who is the choir leader uh, who can sing for us? Lord, make me, make me an instrument. everything it takes to be servant leaders and instruments of his peace. This peace, you're making peace 
within and peace between you, the people you're leading and our God, our Savior. Pray for grace. Make that song your prayer now. That you will be an instrument of peace. Instrument of nurturing. Instrument of strength. Instrument of encouragement. Instrument of comfort. Instrument of servant leadership. Instrument that brings people to the God that is their chief shepherd. That you will service God and he will be pleased with your service. Ask the Lord to help you. Pray, pray for yourself. That henceforth you'll be the type of leader that does not observe offenses, even though if there is an error, you correct it in love. That lead people to safety. You lead them to green pasture. Do not lead them astray. You are the shepherd that will shield them, protect them from error, from devastation, from discomfort, from destruction. You are the shepherd that will give your life, give your time. Give your emotion, give your money, give your counsel, give as the need arises for the safety and comfort of the sheep, that God may be glorified, that our service be not hindered. Thank you, Abba Father. You have not asked us to do something that is impossible. You have not left us without counsel, without strength. Holy Spirit is always around us to help us, to teach us, to direct us, to counsel us, to even strengthen us, to guide us, to help us. We submit to your leadership, O Holy Spirit. We ask that you prime us when we are becoming helpless, that you help us, because it's you that will work in us both to will and to do your good pleasure. We want to do your good pleasure as leaders. Lord Holy Spirit, we submit to your leadership. We ask you to help us to achieve, to bring pleasure to the Most High. That we will not fail you. We will not disappoint you. But that we will bring you pleasure all the way. Help us to find favor in the sight of the people we are leading. So that they will be compliant. They will fear you and follow us. Let it be that each one of us, O oh God, will bring you fragrance, pleasure. And in turn, there is a guarantee of your blessings in our lives. We are grateful for this election. We will not fail you. We will ask, oh God, we ask that you help us. We will not fail you. Thank you for helping us to locate those areas that we have been failing. Maybe in our style of leadership. There are levels and styles of leadership. Some of us are autocratic. Some of us are laissez faire. Everything just lies loose. Some of us are very, very, you know, some are democratic. Lord, whatever we are operating on that is not producing results, give us the wisdom to change our style and produce results in the lives of those we are living. And make them disciples as well. Because when we have led and people are not made to strong, stand strong enough to also disciple others, the work is not fully done. Lord, your word says, Paul planted, Apollos watered, and you gave increase. Give us increase in this desire that we will achieve and bring fragrance to the heavens, that your name will be glorified. Thank you, Father, for you're able to do exceeding abundantly above we could ask or think. In Jesus' sweet and efficacious name we are prayed.